Hafade Guam. I'm Adriana Cotero, and I am joined with the Victim Advocates Reaching Out President, um, Dr. Judith Wanpat. Also, um, Vero is what many people know the organization by. So, hi, Judith. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. So, we're discussing, um, you know, just support for victims that may be experiencing domestic violence as it could be at a higher risk during this time as the pandemic has reached our shores. And in addition, um, we're all on lockdown, so we're indoors more. So what are some of the efforts that Vero is taking to further um, combat domestic violence on the island, especially during this time? Well, uh, and thank you for that question because actually nationally there was a webinar uh, that was uh, put together by the crime victims community, primarily for COVID-19. And what that uh, what webinar was for was to assist us in uh, reaching out to our victims by one, posting on our websites uh, what some of these uh, safety plans uh, that they should take, uh, put it also on Facebook and, um, and other social um, you know, formats. So uh, some of those, of course, uh, are, are important because many of our victims are in isolation, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And the worst part of it is that the abusers are in the same household. So that right. makes it really hard uh, for them to plan, but it's still important uh, that you know they should start thinking about it just in case. Right. I mean, school's been out. We're in the third week since school's been out as well. Um, a lot of businesses are closed. So, so at many times school could have been a um, almost a safe getaway for children and even individuals that experience any domestic violence work was a getaway. So during this time, um, you mentioned having a plan in place. So what could be some safety planning for those that are experiencing the domestic violence and are at higher risk? Okay, some of the things that they, they really should plan for, especially with uh, their children, one of the very first thing will be to teach them how to call 911. I think that that is, is, is critical. Uh, secondly, to instruct the children then that should the uh, abuse escalate to a certain point that their you know, safety is in danger, that they should leave the house and to specifically tell them uh, where maybe they can go to feel, you know, safer, whether it's a neighbor or family member. Uh, the third would be actually come up with a code uh, word, uh, you know, so that when things get really bad, I'll just give you an example. It's not necessarily this, but let's say the uh, victim would say, let's go call to, you know, for a pizza delivery. That could be the code. And when the kids hear that, then they know then that means we need to you know to get out uh the other would be is uh, if they really don't have a place to go to at least in the home try to find a place that's safe for them to go in, in case the children are afraid uh but please instruct them that the two places they should not go to would be like the kitchen uh because then there are weapons you know there are knives and other things and the bathroom as well because that there too are items that you know definitely can be used uh to harm you know anyone uh teach the children to uh you know go to or call or um find somebody that they can talk to find some comfort talking to uh, you know, especially now, of course, like you said, they're not in school, so they don't have their teacher, they don't have a counselor, but maybe they might have a friend that they would like uh, to talk to. The other is that uh, parents or the, the victim should tell their children that if they themselves, the parent, uh, the victim is, is being harmed, that the children really shouldn't intervene at that time because then more than likely the children will probably be the next uh, to be abused. So. It's hard, you know, to say this, and children are told to stay away, but, you know, you don't want, and, and I'm sure the parent, you know, would not want the children to be harmed. They're much smaller, they're weaker, you know, and they're easier, you see, to, to harm. And so as hard as, you know, that is a, a message to give the children, they really should, um, 
you know, tell them to do that. So those are just some of the uh, safety planning uh, with uh, children that, you know, they can teach their children, especially at this time. Yeah. Um, since since we have been in, um, you know, lockdown and have been isolated and quarantined, is there, have there been a rise in reports that Varro has received? Uh, you know, I, I've checked actually with our advocates. Uh, well, we have uh, staffers during the weekdays who monitor, you know, the phone. And then on the weekends, uh, our advocates like myself, then we would uh, assist by relieving our staff and we take the hotline on the weekends. And they have reported that um, it's not a, there's no real peak, so to speak. However, the phone calls that we're getting are slightly different because it's not the victims themselves that are calling, but rather now family and, and friends are calling. We even receive a call, a long distance call from, you know, the mainland, uh, worried about a family member here. Uh, but the most important thing that we always tell others, and that's why we put out our numbers, is they, the victims themselves, really needs to be the one to call us. Uh, for assistance, we can't. Uh, we don't call back when they call us because we don't want to endanger the the victim who's making a phone call. We want to always protect them, but in, we want to make sure that it is the right individual as well that you know we're calling. So that's why it's important that the victims instead uh, call us. So you've had you've had outside sources calling in reporting yes. that they've that they've and, known that these people have experienced some sort of domestic violence in one way or another or abuse. Yeah, and, and so they, they'll tell us, they give us names, but you know, and numbers, but we can't call. And many times, from what I understand, at least with these uh, recent uh, days past, is that the victims themselves have not called. Uh, those that were reported by family and, and friends. And we suspect that the reason for that is because the abuser naturally is in the home and the victims will be afraid to call with, you know, the abuser there. So, so but we have gotten oh. calls. I'm sorry. No, I said we have gotten some calls as well, uh, basically to find out, you know, what's available uh, for them, what resources are available for them. Are there shelters, you know, for them in the future should they need it? So, and we do provide, you know, that information as well. So if family members, like you said, from the mainland or from elsewhere do call in, um, rather, because you guys cannot call the people that they're reporting on, what what do you what do you recommend instead? Well, we recommend we always tell uh, the individuals is uh, first of all is to make sure to tell whoever they're they're calling for is that their safety is you know first and foremost that they're physically safe and to recommend to them one is either try to get to a safe place, call a family member. Uh, and, and it would be great if they call us as well, because then once they call us, then we can connect them with all the different organizations that we are working with. And the same thing as well, first of all, we would ask is that, are you safe? And should they say they're not, then we would ask them, you know, is there a way in which you would be able, uh, you know, to leave uh, the home so that then we can, you know, help them find a place, uh, you know, to stay. So those are just some of the things that, that you know, we, we relate to them initially. So in an instance where, let's say a family member um, that is being abused does call you or an individual calls you on the hotline, which your guys' hotline is, let me throw that out there real fast. It's 671-477-5552. And if they do call you, how, and especially during this time right now, during the time of the crisis, how do you respond? Can you can you do on-site visits or do you have to meet them somewhere or how how do you go about that? No, no, we won't, we don't go to the home. I mean, you're right, if we always ask them is that, you know, can they, um, if they have a vehicle, can they leave, of course, the place? And yes, uh, we could, you know, meet uh, with them. Uh, but then what we'll need for them to do is that if they need shelter, because we're, we, cause first of all, we want them to be safe. So we want them to get out of the place. And, and if it's getting in their vehicle and then driving somewhere, then we can meet with them. <clears throat> We will check the shelters if there are available in you know, a space for the individual or a family, but then we'll have the 
the uh, victim uh, themselves call uh, the shelters because the, the shelters, we can't make the arrangements for them. They, they themselves must call these shelters uh, because then they're able to uh, kind of screen, you know, the, the, the individuals or families to make sure they have, you know, space and are able to accommodate them. So I know you meant you had mentioned, um, and this just came to me right now, you had mentioned that having a plan in place that oftentimes it helps for the parent and the child to have a code word, right? Um, uh -huh. The example you provided was let's order pizza or we're going to order pizza. So whenever um, an individual, a parent or guardian does call the hotline, can they, is there a code word that they can use on the hotline as well that you would, that borrow or, um, you know, the respondents oh. know? as far as no. if they like no there's none and and we couldn't we can't uh, do that as well because it would vary by you know the individuals and the worst part of it all is that uh, what if the abusers themselves should you know get the the um, the code and that's why when we tell when parents are to tell the children what the code is they are not to tell anyone about you know that code as well it must strictly be just between you know the victim and uh, the children so and the reason for that too as well because some we've seen in the past where the abusers uh would see their partner on a phone and will grab the phone and would demand who is this who are they calling then they'll call back trying to <clears throat> you know um, trap us so to speak to reveal who we are but we never do we we don't say that we are, you know, with Vero, which it's just like any phone call, hello, you know, and then we take it from there. The victims themselves then would start to, you know, open up and tell us, you know, what's going on, what their needs are, if it's specific information. Uh, sometimes they'll just say that, you know, uh, I'm going to the police, but can you be there? as an advocate, you know, with me because they're afraid, they don't know if it's a rape, you know, then the same thing they'll ask us also uh, sometimes to accompany, you know, them. So, you know, those are, are times then when we do go with uh, the victims. And um, you had mentioned that you guys have a few different community partners, so many resources for people to reach out to right now. Can you um, can you list those different resources that you guys are working okay. with? Uh, well, so, so there's several. Like for example, uh, let me say just for for food, we have like the Salvation Army Pantry, Oasis uh, Empowerment Center, Kamalin Carry Dot, Catholic Social Services. Then for clothing. We have like Oasis Thrift Shop, Salvation Army, Salv uh, Island Girl Power, Simple Hearts, Counseling, the um, ESA Psychological Center, uh, Transportation is the Victim Advocate Unit, uh, the police, we give them numbers for the Hagatnya, Aga, Dededo, uh, Tumon Precinct, and then uh, within GPD, they have the Victim Advocate Unit as well. Uh, they're, known as DART, then visitation, Erica's house, shelters, this is always a big thing, Oasis Housing, Alley Shelter, Guma San Jose, Sanctuary Inc. for youth who are 12 to 17, um, for the elderly, the APS Emergency Receiving Home for Elderly, Legal Assistance, the AG, Guam Legal, Public Defender Service, Victim Services Center, Sexual Assault, uh, we work with Healing Hearts Crisis Center uh, for crisis uh, intervention services. We work with Guam Behavioral uh, Victim Assistance. Uh, we have CPS, of course, for children, the Victim Services Center, the OASIS, uh, again, GPD, and for the elderly, and then some others like the Guam Coalition, uh, the Timuning Mayor's Office, you know, and and many others, but those are the basic ones that uh, normally as advocates, we would always have these numbers uh, with us so that when they call, we will be able to give them these numbers to, to call. And we also sometimes, uh, depending, uh, would to transport them to the court if they need the assistance, transport them uh, to meet with, you know, the police or like I say, the rape crisis, you know, center, things of that, you know, nature. Wow, it's amazing. That's a very long list, and it's great that it is that long for a matter like yeah. this. 
Definitely. Um, and that many people have, I'm sorry, what? Sorry. No, we definitely need more, you know, and I, and I like to, if I may at this time, especially because, you know, Vero really is just a group of uh, regular people like yourself and myself who would like to volunteer and we train them. We do a 40 hour training and then, you know, we, we would shadow them on weekends because they take the phones on the weekends. And, uh, and there's always a need for, you know, advocates to, to help, you know, uh, take the hotline. So we don't, we definitely are not overflowing with uh, advocates on our list. So many times, you know, we're doing it every weekend, every month, you know, so it's, I'm hoping that after this, maybe we'll get uh, a, a number of individuals who are interested. And currently, as a matter of fact, just before this uh, self-quarantine took place is that we have just started our first Saturday of, you know, an eight hour training. Oh. And uh, if there's anyone interested, if they can please just call the 477-5552. Give us your name and interest, and we'll let you know, and we'll train you, and then get you to help us man the hotline because so it's a twenty-four. And you can continue training right now. You guys oh, are no, still. We decided, oh no, we decided to cease the, the training primarily because, like for example, all those uh, lists of resources that I mentioned, they are part of the training, so they actually come and they help with the training They tell them what their services are, what are the do's and don'ts and all that, you know, for our advocates. So we couldn't very well continue because we knew then that these are really essential individuals in the community and they won't be able to come out just for a Saturday training. So we, we put it on hold until uh, this is over and then we will continue. Now, I wonder if you have any tips you can share on, um, you know, a lot of times when people are going out right now, if anything, it's to go to the grocery store and just for um, a few minutes at a time right now. So are there any tips that you can give the community in general to look out for signs of people that may be experiencing any abuse at home? Oh, gosh, there's, there's definitely a lot that you, you would see. Uh, many times is that, you know, the withdrawal, uh, or you may see some physical um, scarring uh, bruises. Uh, you would see that they're not able to make some eye contact. They can't talk. They're not allowed to talk. Uh, the, the partner would be there basically controlling the individual, you know, every move. Uh, things like, for example, when they're shopping, of course, is that then the individual would not have control in terms of uh, what to buy, uh, to pay for, you know, certain items. Uh, it, it, those are very visual. You'll be able to see that, you know, right away, withholding a lot of things, uh, you know, from the individual that maybe they can't uh, purchase certain foods. Uh, you know, because there's always this threat that the, the abusers would do is to always control their victims. Mm -hmm. so, and they can control them in many ways. Like, you know, for, for example, now, with COVID-19, you would think that one of the necessary items to, to get would be like hand sanitizers or some disinfectants and and the abusers can withhold those from, you know, the victims to threaten them that, you know, if you don't behave or you don't do what I say, then, you know, you're going to get, you know, this disease and, you know, threaten them, frighten them, uh, you know, withhold insurance cards telling them they they won't be able to to get you know to seek medical you know attention you know these are just there's a whole slew of things but uh, you can really see this especially when you know they're in public and if they're with their partners they're in a rush uh, they're um, just um, being kept too close uh, to you know of course the the, uh, the abuser that because that's how you know they control them so, mm -hmm. And even with the six, you know, feet distance that we're trying to keep, uh, you find that that would not be the case. That they're constantly looking, watching them, keeping them always around them, controlling them. Right. No, you uh, bring up a very good point that I, that honestly, I haven't really thought too much into was that withholding a threat could be withholding medical treatment. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So, for all we know, there could be someone potentially with the virus at home being withheld mm -hmm. from treatment. Yes. 
Um, and that's, that's some things that we also got in the webinar, you know, things like that, keeping the health insurance card, you know, from them, uh, you know, threatening them, of course, that they can't get medical assistance, you know, so, and that's a, a, a real, you know, big fear for them. Mm -hmm. well. Um, how can people reach out then? We, we have, you guys have the hotline and then otherwise, um, website, social media, email. Yes. Facebook. We are just search, uh, Guam, uh, Vera Guam, and, uh, you'll be able to go into our Facebook and our website. You also go to, yes, uh, www uh, uh, you know, dot com and you can, uh, be able to pull up, you know, some information and uh, numbers that you can call. And it's, you know, and of course our lines, our phone lines again, 477-5222, um, I mean 5552 is that it's a 24-7 hotline. So, you know, it's, but we sleep with our telephones, you know, so. Well, we appreciate the work that you do. Yes. We would need we would need to make sure that we keep it with us at all times, uh, you know, just in case a call should come in. Um, Doctor Wampa, is there anything else you'd like to add for the community to know during this time, as far as uh, especially with dealing with any domestic violence at home? Well, the the most important thing that they really well two things. One, of course, is their physical well being. That is what we want to make sure, because when we talk to them, that's the very first thing we ask, do you feel safe? And if they say no, then naturally, then other things will start to, to kick in. But if they feel that there's just no way out of this situation, then the next thing we, we like to suggest for them to do is this emotional self-care, uh, you know, uh, for themselves is that in spite of the fact that yes, they're in an isolated uh, area and in a home is that, you know, I'm sure they'll be able to find like a space somewhere, like if they go outside under a tree, uh, sitting in a comfy chair, maybe near the window. Uh, it's just like a time for themselves, you know, uh, to be able then uh, that's the self care type of things that we want them to do to stay emotionally healthy until they're able then to, you know, seek any outside assistance. And, but of course the, the physical part is the most important thing first, because then after that, once we uh, get them into a secure, safe place, then we can start, you know, the, the other counseling services that are provided in the community. Of course. All right. Well, thank you again for coming on here and talking to us all. And again, for your service. Oh, thank you so much for helping us get the word out uh, to our victims that there are uh, available resources in the community uh, to help them. So please stay safe. Make sure you're safe. Your children are safe. Have a plan, you know, and uh, and call 477-5552 for any assistance. Yes. 24 hours. Call that number. 24 hours, seven days a week. All right. Thank you, Dr. Juan Pat. My pleasure. Okay. Bye. And thank you all for tuning in. Again, that was Dr. Judith Wanpat with the president of Vero. And I'm just going to say that hotline number one more time because it is 24 hours and you can call for any assistance you may need. And that is 671-477-5552. Be safe.